hello, my friend, or maybe you know his uh, lover, uh, sexy time, yes. Uh, remember, it's like summer, it's like time we spent in Saint-Tropez. Mm, bouncy, bouncy, <laughs> beautiful so Just read the piece of paper. Okay. This is Flavio Briatore. I am not allowed to take part in this podcast now or in the future. At least until you know his Bernie uh, overturns FIA decision for me. Mm. Hello, welcome to another, well, you know what it is. Uh, I'm the average height one. Standing next to me is Richard Porter, loaming freak, and podcasting's most popular dwarf, Zog. <laughs> <laughs> So if you've no idea what I'm talking about, you need to see and not just listen to Gareth Jones on Speed 100, which I know you did in your huge numbers. Thank you very much indeed for that. But uh, back to old chat without none of that telly nonsense. Yes, in this show has a 74% reduction in self-consciousness as a result. <laughs> so what are we talking about? Well, Formula One, which is where we have to start. Can I ask a fundamental question to both of you? Mm-hmm. Button or Barrichello, or will it be Vettel that wins the championship? Well, I think it's fantastic that we're going to these last two races and it's still a three-horse race. But much as it is still a three-horse race, Vettel or Barrichello still have to win it and still actually have to score quite a few points to take it. I think it's still Button. You got money on Button or Barrichello or, or v- v- Vittel? Vettel? 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 I don't have money on anyone, literally, but uh, if I was going to put a few quid down, I would agree with Zog, Button. Yeah. I know it's a terrible cliche, but I have heard... Uh, from pundits saying it, which is the championship is buttons to lose. That's what they're saying. That's and exactly I, I right. I think I agree. Well, I mean, you yeah, know, it stands to reason, doesn't it? He's in the lead. As long as he doesn't monumentally screw up, then he should just sit. But well, it does worry me. And have we touched on this on the show before that it could be one of those seasons where the world championship is seized at the last minute by a bloke coming in sixth. In one of those sort of slightly damp endings to the season. Yeah, yeah, that's it's possible. It's a shame. It would be nice to see some glorious overtaking manoeuvres from Apache qualifying session to take a win and seal his championship. That would but, be great. I don't imagine it's going to happen. How many championships, oh, if you look back, actually, you know, how many championships are won in kind of those perfect races where a guy wins the last race of the season or wins well, a different race Damon, you know, as opposed to yeah. it uh, you know, being a slightly sort of damn fifth place. But 2007 or? what exactly happened there? Lewis lost it by lost one point. Lost it by one point. Now, but then did, I can't remember, did Kimi. Raikkonen win the last race? I forget. I think he didn't. I think it was Massa, and he had the the outfit on, didn't he? He had the Brazilian coloured outfit on rather than the Ferrari race (laughs) race suit. It was his win, and it was a glorious win, yeah. Yeah, of course. How how quickly you forget. Yeah, this is the trouble. It all jumbles into one. Yep, that's the trouble. I get really confused. I tell you, I'm looking forward to seeing Schumacher in the Benetton. See how confused I am? (laughs) I did have one sort of thought, though, watching the last race. I don't believe for a moment that anybody manipulates races to the championship to produce you know dramatic finishes and to sort of you know keep the drama going throughout mm, the season yeah. um, but we but we've had a couple of incredible years where you know yeah. if you you know if you if you wanted to write a script for the season you know you couldn't do much better in terms I of the heard drama. an interesting bit of gossip from now which was the race where the timing went down in qualifying that was um, uh, before Singapore was it Valencia Valencia or Hungary I can't remember but anyway Hungary remember, it was Hungary wasn't it where the timing went down and there was this sort of, at the end of qualifying... Yeah, they were getting out of cars and going, oh, yeah, oh well, hang on, how did you... Where am I? What, what, what? You did a 132? You did a, I did a 131? Oh, f- no. That was yeah, the moment exactly. I remember. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Those are the very words. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. It was brilliant, wasn't it? This is that kind of thing. I do remember. But I heard some gossip that apparently, and I hasten to add that this was all done in jest, as far as I'm aware, the drivers were all in a room, and Bernard Eccleston walked in, with his palm out and went, right, let's start the bidding. Who wants to be on pole? (laughs) He was joking. I'm stressing that he was joking. If that did happen, and I'm assured that it did, he was joking. We're not suggesting that Bernie takes cash handouts for people's pole positions, but he did this jest. But then what did happen, apparently, is then the timing sort of came back on, but then Bernie just walked in and went, right, you're on pole, you're second, you're third, and sort of just as if he was handing out like a (laughs) sports day prize or something. And apparently it was all very weird, and the teams were slightly thrown by it, because they used to, you know, microscopically detailed data on a screen that tells them who's who's got pole position and so on. I love the way that it's 
playing out the championship that we watched the Suzuka race and not a great deal happened in the Suzuka race qualifying on the other hand was absolutely gripping because of the sheer sense of jeopardy that Formula One often loses. That sense, not just jeopardy to a car staying on the circuit and getting a good time, but the very real sense of jeopardy to people surviving impact. You know, at one point, I think it was Glock's crash. It was one of those rare moments where we were on board. This is the world feed, I assume you guys saw around the world. The BBC certainly carried it. We were actually on board with Glock as not only he lost it and then hit the wall. And that's proper television, that is. And I swear, throughout living rooms all over the world, people go, ooh. Yeah, it was a biggie, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Talking about the pictures, apart from those moments, I thought the the pictures on the coverage of that race were the best I've seen all season. It was really, really good coverage for that race. It's true that it wasn't the most dramatic race in terms of action on track, but you know what there was to see on track, they didn't miss much, and there was a very good slow-mo shot. I wonder what caused that, because it's F1 TV is an entity in its own right, and they travel around, so it's the same people, isn't it? Most no, no, not always. It depends. Uh, very often, the local broadcaster just aren't up to the job, and right. so that's when uh, F1 TV rumbles by FOM, Bernie's company, Mm -hmm. step in and take over. Although there are many races which are still run by the local broadcaster. Oh, really? I I think it was Fuji TV who ran. I could be wrong, but it's Mm. usually Fuji TV. I know things change. And they do a great job. I I know from experience, because as V will tell you, Violet, who's on a Mac over there. V, Mm. do you remember when we were in Suzuka 99, was it? Yes. Was it 99? 98 or 99? Right. We were doing a radio show about Formula One for BBC Radio Wales from Suzuka, billing it as the Welsh Grand Prix. Is there no stopping this boy? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we had to get a signal down an ISDN line to the BBC studio in Cardiff. Now, this is no mean achievement to get ISDN line work, especially when you've got no idea how these things work <laughs> 10 years ago. And Violet and I struggled with it and struggled with it. And, and then a very helpful man from Fuji TV suddenly appeared from the commentary box next door. How he knew we were having this trouble, I don't know. But he came in went, hello Cardiff, and we were on. <laughs> so if Fuji can do that and get my programme back live from Japan to Cardiff, they can do anything. That probably explains do why it's so good. you remember back in good the 80s when it was definitely all local TV doing the Grand Prix? Oh, because yes. there was a distinct difference in the quality of coverage depending on where you were and I do remember Murray Walker and James Hunt griping about it sometimes and Murray going if the director would actually show us this you know you go to uh, Esteban Chuero uh, you yeah, know well, it'd be like having an average Grand Prix lap. and no matter what on earth Senna was doing the, the camera would just be on him even if he'd actually retired and had gone for a wee the camera would still be on him even though there was a mighty struggle between I don't know Prost and someone on the track but no oh uh, and Senna's now getting into a helicopter and going home there we are we can <laughs> He's combing his hair. But the great thing is that the suspense of Suzuka. You know, one of the problems about Formula One, they always say there's not enough overtaking. I think if there was too much overtaking Formula One, I think there was only one move in Suzuka, wasn't mm. there? That was a failed attempt by dear old Sutil. But oh, no, were, Button did that move, didn't he? he yeah. Yes, he did, didn't he? Yeah. He, got, he, and, he was and, a bit opportunist, wasn't he? he and, was, yeah, taking uh, Kovalainen and... and Kovalainen did well. Um, hmm. Yeah, but when he had his little nudge with... Oh, it again, wasn't it? Or, yeah, possibly. Uh, he seemed to have a hell of a weekend. Yeah, but. Right, but. Um, there wasn't too much overtaking, but that's great. It just adds to the tension for the end of the championship. You know, yeah. there's still so much to go on. Not much has happened. It's kind of... It's on ice for the moment in some respects. So we're set up now for the next two races, which are just going to be mm. phenomenal, phenomenal. I wouldn't put it past Barrichello winning this championship. That's what I believe. He I really doesn't often go well in Brazil, though. Enough. He hasn't, really? that's true. Yeah. Do you think he's a choker? He chokes because it's the home be. race. He's a he choker. Be. Yes. I like that too. My mate Bobby always has a great view on motor racing. He says, you don't want a great start well, to a race. He lives in Silverstone. Yes, <laughs> great view. <laughs> really it's funny. Good. Paddock, his address is <laughs> one. Terribly the paddock. noisy though. <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> he has a great view. He says, a good start to a motor race is fine, but you need a good ending Mm -hmm. and that's what this championship it had an amazing start the shock of those brawns coming out of the box I mean faster Mm. than everything and then that sort of period of catch up where everyone developed these double deck diffusers but it's still all to play it's not going to be a great end to these races but it's going to be a great end to the championship even if very little happens the sense of tension oh yeah as an on paper championship 
you'll look back on this and go, God, do you remember 2009? Wow, what a season, what a season, because everything to play for, you know, and all these teams, Force India suddenly coming from nowhere, what was going on there? You know, that doesn't happen a lot where what you perceive as a back market team is doing the business. Uh, yeah, it's been great. On well, paper, I will look forward to reading about this again, uh, because I'll forget what happened, as we've already discussed. Whatever, I should be watching it in HD. Are you going to come and watch it with me? Yeah, I think so. It's, for, for the new TV that displays Gareth Jones on speed logos. <laughs> if the championship goes to the last race, we'll try and turn a show around within a couple of hours of that race. Oh, yeah? I yeah? like those odds. Okay, so let's do that. Yeah. All right. We'll sure. continue this uh, this theme of making things difficult for ourselves on this damn show. <laughs> and let's do it all in uh, Swahili. Not again. Uh, Jambo. <laughs> Register a complaint. Hello, miss. What do you mean, miss? I'm sorry, I'm foreign. I wish to make a complaint. We're closing for pit stops. Never mind that, my lad. I wish to complain about this motor racing series, what I purchased not half an hour ago from this very boutique. Ah, yes, the A1 Grand Prix World Cup of Motorsport. What's wrong with it? I'll tell you what's wrong with it, my lad. It's dead. That's what's wrong with it. No, it's resting. Look, matey. I know a dead international single seat of motor racing series when I see one, and I am looking at one right now. No, it's not dead. It's resting. It's a remarkable race series, A1 Grand Prix. Excellent sponsorship opportunities. The sponsorship opportunities don't enter into it. It's stone dead. No, it's resting. All right, then. If it's resting, I'll wake it up. Hello, World Cup of Motorsports. I got a lovely fresh tribune full of race fans for you. There. It moved. No, it didn't. That was you in the garage. I never. Yes, you did. I never did anything. Hello, A1GP. Testing, testing, practice starts in five minutes. Now that is what I call a dead race series. No, it's just stunned. Stunned? Yes, you stunned it, just as it was waking up. International motor racing series stun easily, you know. Now look, mate, I've definitely had enough of this. That formula is definitely deceased. And when I purchased it not half an hour ago, you assured me that its total lack of movement was due to it being tired and shagged out after a prolonged sponsor day. Well, he's probably pining for the antipodes. Pining for the antipodes? What kind of talk is that? Look, why did he fail to get a race at Brands Hatch this year, then? The World Cup of Motorsport prefers racing in the Southern Hemisphere. A remarkable car in it. Lovely Ferrari race engine. Now look, mush... I took the liberty of examining that car when I got it home, and I discovered the only reason it had Ferrari written on it was that Maranello had loaned you the blueprints for an F1 car that was five years out of date. Of course it's a Ferrari. Look, it says so on the highly tuned race engine cover. Highly tuned race engine? It's a bleeding road car engine. This is no more a race car engine than I'm a Norwegian blue parrot. I'm telling you, this race series is deceased. No, it's not. It's pining. It's not pining. It's passed on. The race series is no more. It has ceased to be. It's expired and gone to be its maker. It's a stiff bereft of life. It rests in peace. If you hadn't paid for after teams to be there yourself, it'd be pushing up the daisies from season one. Its metabolic processes are now history. It's off the twig. It's kicked the bucket. It's shuffled off its mortal coil and run down a pit lane and joined the bleeding paddock invisible. This is an ex-World Cup of motorsport. Well, I better replace it then. Oh, sorry, Squire. I've had to look around the back of the garage and we're right out of International Motor Racing Series. I see, I see, I get the picture. I got the Euro F3000 Series. Oh, really? Does it attract decent drivers? Not really. Well, it's hardly a bloody replacement then, is it? OK, how about F2? F2? Is anyone interested in it? No. It's Sniff Mitchell with Gareth Jones on speed. In the first part of this show, we ask the question, Button or Barrichello? This time we ask, which member of the pit lane is Sideshow Bob? Have you noticed this? Roman Grosjean. Roman Grosjean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Sideshow Bob. He is. 
totally. He's, he's bizarre. Uh, either that, or uh, he looks like... Have you ever been in France and you flick on the telly? It's probably different for you because he speaks French. Because I'm always mesmerised by foreign telly that I don't understand. It looks a bit like a fast show to me. And I, <laughs> and I was in Paris earlier this year and I flicked on the TV and, and there was some game show that made no sense whatsoever. I mean, it wasn't even possible to try and extract some reason from it with my pigeon GCSE French. It just seemed to make... There, there was no continuity between the games or even at one point there seemed to be a whole different presenter cropped up. And, <laughs> and uh, he looks like he might be a French TV presenter. He's got that slightly avant-garde hair. It's pretty well, avant-garde, that Well, hair. maybe he is... Who was moonlighting as a banker recently? Who uh, went back to his job in the hey? bank? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. It was. Uh, was it? Was it Glock or was it? Um was he no, a, a young driver. Uh, Seriously, he went seriously. back to his day job. Yeah, he spent, he spent, he spent a couple. He, he went. But he didn't work in like in Nat West behind the counter. He was like, he was like no, he, no. He, I think I think he was also like going sort of back into the you know his his daddy's bank's oh, okay. uh, offices. You know, you know, he was doing Which pop, one's the doing pop work as a banker. Uh, Adrian Sutil. Sutil's Adrian. The pianist. Yeah. Adrian uh, Sutil. Yeah. Oh. He's a good pianist too. He really is very good pianist. I wish he was as good a driver. I was, no, I'm sorry. I, just thought I'm just, sorry. Yeah, it's, well, I, I love him. I do um, love him. Okay, sorry. What were we talking about? Oh so, yeah, yeah just Bob. some things we've noticed. Yes, yeah. Sideshow <laughs> Bob is now in, in Formula One, and uh, you don't watch Heroes, but Sila from Heroes is masquerading as Sebastian Buemi in the Toro Rosso at the moment. A little I'll bit. I'll take your word. For you that. watch yeah. when he starts absorbing the powers of the other drivers around him. You, you'll know I'm right. Well, of course, uh, Silar from Heroes is also Spock. That's now. true. So, yeah. um, that's that's Zachary that's Quinto. What? Zachary yeah. Quinto, who plays Silar in Heroes, plays Spock in the new Star, new Star Trek, Trek movie. movie. What the one that's come out? Yeah, yeah. that's around, yeah. been around, yeah. gone. With, yeah, and, and I think sort of pre-Star Trek, Star right. Trek with young. Okay. Spock and young Kirk. Okay, we may have gone off good. topic. Is um, it okay? And d- well, let's not get onto Star Trek <laughs> again because you know what happens. Z- Zog, you didn't see. I don't know if either of you saw this, uh, but at the start of the BBC coverage, the grid walk that Martin Brundle did. Did you hear about this, Richard? Uh, yeah, I, well, because you walk. mentioned it to me in an email, and actually. I wanted to go back and try and watch it. Uh, <laughs> explain for people who haven't seen it, including me. During the course of the grid walk, Martin Brundle has a quick chat with Nick Heidfeld, one of the few drivers still available for comment. Yes. <laughs> because all the others are far too busy, and Heidfeld's still trying to find a seat for next year, so he'll talk to anyone. But Heidfeld, with his fantastic kill the wabbit, kill the mm-hmm. wabbit lisp that he has, said something about, yes, he was wanking higher up on the grid than he had normally. <laughs> But um, <laughs> as if that wasn't difficult enough, Martin Brundle then turned away and walked away. And whilst he said he was talking about ranking, he was making a hand oh, movement. Oh, no. <laughs> it was. You watch it. If it's on the beat, someone will have it on YouTube. It's extraordinary. Yeah. So it got me thinking, you know, will Kubica knock out a couple of quick laps when necessary, you know? <laughs> they do sometimes say, I've heard commentators say, oh, he, he's really banged that one in on a fast lap or something. And you always think, he's, he's all not, over his behind. Off yeah. the Ferrari there. It, it, That's it. it. The, the, the potentially, carry on F1 is but a moment yeah. away. Stroking the car through the last yeah, few it's laps. Just, it's, yes. it's mucky. I couldn't work out pulling the end off it, though, how that would work. <laughs> Should we move no, on? I think it's time let's, to let's yeah, move wrap on. that one up. Okay, what else did you have on your list of things to talk about? Well, uh, these drivers, I mentioned Kubica there, who is now a Renault driver again. Yes. Because he won the World Series by Renault, and that's how he got his test in F1 and ultimately got into F1, and he's being very grateful about it. Has he made the right choice? Kubica, we know to be brilliant. We yes. all agree. No, We're no, not. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. No, 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 no. Are Renault going to suffer without Flav and Pat Simmons next year. How good are Renault going to be next year is the question. Well, I suppose the question is how committed are they to F1? Renault surely have to make a sort of a fairly big strategic decision about whether they carry on doing this thing properly or whether they decide that that was a watershed that means they have to wind down their involvement and whether that means just being an engine supplier or... Who well, knows? Well, is- do you think if they were going to bail out the whole, as you say, watershed of the PK scandal would have given them the perfect opportunity to say, do you know what, this isn't worth the aggro, we've lost two of our main people who run our team, forget it, we're out of here. 
Or do you think that actually that would have just looked like uh, they were sore losers and, and if there is some kind of high-level board decision being made in Paris, they'll sit on it for a bit. But then why announce that they've signed a top-level and presumably yeah. quite expensive driver? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, bringing Kubica on board, plus the fact that they got Bob Bell installed as uh, new principal, mm. it seems like you know that they are going to be carrying on. I'm certain they're going to carry on. I think they've got a lot to prove. I think they want to wipe the slate clean and reinvent... Renault. It's an opportunity. You've got to turn these things around. You know, Max Clifford should be working for Renault at the moment. He says, well, I know it's you've had a bit of bad press, but you can make it work for you here. You know, yeah, you, know yeah. you can have the book deal on the back of it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, new, clean Renault who are completely disassociated from Flavio and Pat. They've got to make it work for them is what I'm going to say. And I think that's what they'll do. I think Kubitz is the very beginning of it. Mm. Who's going to be next to him, though? Will it be Hakey? I don't think so, because Hakey's been at Renault before and was kind of ceremoniously booted out I think Hakey's going to go to a Mercedes related team that's how they'll get rid of him so either Force India will get him Mm. or possibly Braun but unlikely in my opinion Okay, so who else would be good to go along would you go for a slightly more experienced driver or or do you go for a young gun and Kubitz as your more experienced hand on the team well I suppose Renault have done both haven't they in the past so you couldn't really sort of say they have a, a strategy for that but Well, new management, new guard. They may have a whole new philosophy which will emerge. But if you're paying for Kubica, you know, how much money are you going to have left? Would they take Nick Heidfeld as well? You know, Heidfeld has actually performed better than Kubica in the last few races Mm. consistently. You see, you know, there might be sense in doing that. It'd be interesting to take the whole driver line and move from one team to the other, sort of a la sort of Benetton Ferrari Ferrari, with the Lacey and Berger. Mm, Um, The two chums. So that's Kubica. But then the other one is Alonso going to Ferrari wow. which um, was, has been rumoured for ages hasn't it and in a sense no big news everyone was expecting yeah. it so how will Alonso and Massa get on I mean that's going to be uh... well they can argue in Italian that's that's the bonus because they both speak Italian neither have been native Italian speakers but there was a moment where they had a bit of a concert on you know, where they towel down and put the hats on and there was an argument if mm, can't remember when this was must have been last season where between Massa and Alonso, and they argued in Italian. It's mm. on. It's on YouTube, of course. They argued in Italian. Good language to argue in. I'd it's imagine. the best, yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah, you should get the hand waving for free. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, which, which of course makes you think of the clip of Ricardo Patrese driving his oh, with wife, his wife around <laughs> the uh, circuit. And that. Uh, Beautiful. Look it up on YouTube if you haven't seen it. You will not regret. There it. is actually a link to that on yeah, our own speed page. Last mentioned it, yeah. and then uh, I still find her profoundly attractive for oh, some yeah. reason, <laughs> oh, so, mainly because of the screaming. <laughs> so, R- Richard. Very briefly, Alonso at Ferrari, is that going to work? Well, as we've said before, I still say absolutely hand on heart, I think he's a great driver. I just don't think he's a great person, a great human being. I don't know how that sits with Ferrari. I think actually they do like human beings. They like people with decency because if you talk to people who've worked with Schumacher, for example, who brought great things to Ferrari, everyone speaks very highly of him as a human being, that he's a great team player. And that's where I think Alonso falls down. I don't think he is a team player. You look at it in the past. I mean, uh, for God's sake, he grassed up his own team. And you could say that was some kind of high-minded moral stance and, and that he was being entirely admirable. Mm. But to my mind, he was just being a nasty, weasley little snitch. <laughs> And it is uh, Fernando is the nerve centre, the actual workshops where your Ferrari F1 car will be built. Here uh, is Bay 1 at the moment. We have here uh, chassis 15, which... What are you doing? What? Put it back. I don't know what you mean. I, I, I don't see... No, I, I, I didn't see nothing. The spanner, I saw you slip it into your pocket. Put it back. Yeah, whatever. Uh, this is uh, uh, Alessandro Pagoni, uh, one of our senior engineers. Uh, Alessandro Fernando Alonso. Buongiorno, Fernando. We are so pleased that you... What are you doing? What? The end plate that was on this bank? I don't know what you mean. I don't know anything about it. I was somewhere else at the time, isn't it? I can see it inside your jacket. This is Nelson Pica Jr.'s jacket. Ron Dennis made me do it. Please, Fernando, just put it back. Whatever. Oh, look. Uh, he's a test driver. Look up at door. Here he comes. Here he comes. He's still coming. He'll be with us in a minute. Yes, making good progress. He. Oh. Here he's 
uh, crashed through those shelves again. Hmm. Hey, where's my wallet? I don't know. I'm not here. I see nothing. My cochlear made me do it. That's just about it for Gareth Jones on Speed. But before we go, um, bits of gossip. We don't usually do gossip, but I heard a bit of gossip. Go on, do tell. I, I can't tell you where it came from, but um, uh, I will. No, I won't. <laughs> um, it's been mooted that Weber might leave Red Bull this year. Right. Because of the whole Flavio Briatore issue, you know, because he, he's still effectively managed by Flavio yeah, yeah. and has contacts, he's refusing to sever his contract, and Red Bull are disagreeing with him on this, so there might be an opening in Red Bull. Kimmy, uh, interesting, but the, the first thing is, I mean, it, it's uh, that's a fascinating rumor. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed. In a way, I admire the loyalty. If he's saying, well, you know, I'm and not, he is loyal, yeah, he's famously I mean, uh, loyal. Uh, you know, he, that's, he's that's saying loyalty to a. You'd have to say that <laughs> Flav would probably understand if he went, look, I'd love to stay with you, but unfortunately, if I do, I can't race. Mm. And yes. I'm a racing driver, so mm. sorry, bye, keep in touch. You know, I'll see you at QPR or something. Oh, it, it's crazy. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not <laughs> saying it's in any way yeah, insane. A is a very that, admirable uh, thing, but in some cases, uh, you know... You, there's you a question to, of who to whom you give your loyalty, and yes. on the face of it, I'm not sure... That, personally, I'm not sure that uh, yes. Flav is maybe uh, the most... Um, just before I, we I do know. wrap up, just one final thing. PK Jr., have you seen this uh, rumour this week? NASCAR. NASCAR. It's because he's called Junior, isn't it? It's because he's called Junior. <laughs> and also, let's be honest, uh, NASCAR, which has a huge following in the US and, and massive TV audiences, and now I think a lot of those people are tuning in to see a big crash. <laughs> they won't be Who's going to serve up one of those, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Spot on, Richard. Spot on. And uh, very briefly, Trulli mooted to be having a NASCAR test as well. Did you hear about this? Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, if Trulli goes to NASCAR proper, I'm going to change my name back to Gaz Tough. I swear, that is not going to happen. I can't, they'll eat him up. I, Trulli's great, but it's, he's too European, isn't he? He's too Italian. Yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine him like being in, in Charlotte in North Carolina desperately trying to find some good balsamic vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to Gareth Jones on Speed with Richard Porter. Goodbye. Zog. Goodbye. And me, Gareth Jones. See ya. To send us an email, see pictures, get song lyrics, join our Facebook fan site or follow us on Twitter, go to garethjones.tv. Gareth Jones on Speed is made in London by Whizbang. Bang. <laughs>